Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bosch. The number of clean diesel models in North America will double by 2014. Bosch Clean Diesel. Good. Clean. Fun. Bridgestone. Your journey. Our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems. Improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. This is AutoLine Daily for Friday, February 10th, and here's what's going on out there. Product, product, product. It's the engine that drives this industry, and we've got several new offerings coming down the pipeline. First up, Tesla, which just unveiled its electric crossover dubbed the Model X. As we predicted, it's basically a taller version of the Model S sedan. The seven-passenger all-wheel drive CUV comes with gullwing doors, though Tesla calls them falcon wings. Since there's no internal combustion engine, the Model X actually has two trunks. It should be a real performer, too. The 0 to 60 Sprint should take just 4.4 seconds. The starting price will be about 50 grand after tax credits. Production should kick off late next year. Mitsubishi, yeah, they still make cars, just not in the Netherlands anymore. Anyway, the Triple Diamond brand is set to reveal a new version of its Outlander SUV at next month's Geneva Motor Show. Look for a 2-liter gasoline or a 2.2-liter diesel engine under the hood of European models. A variety of driver assistance features will be on the menu, including adaptive cruise control and lane departure warning. And uh, the Outlander's Outlander's grill? Well, that comes standard. Speaking of Geneva, Chevrolet is set to unveil a station wagon version of the Cruise. Per usual, the U.S. is getting left out in the cold. The company has no plans to offer this model in America. European buyers will have a wide array of gasoline and diesel engines to choose from and almost 53 cubic feet of luggage space with all the seats folded down. That is about 1,500 liters. Australian buyers will feel the love as well. Holden's going to offer a version of the cruise wagon down under. The UAW is celebrating it the 75th anniversary of its Flint sit-down strike. That was against GM and it led to the first national contract and sparked labor movements all across the country. Workers protested working conditions at the plant by sitting down and refusing to move. They prevented GM from bringing in strike breakers or moving equipment to another factory. Workers clashed with guards, local police, and even the Michigan National Guard was called in by the governor. But GM finally relented and signed the contract with the UAW. This led to other sit-down strikes at other companies and other industries. Ford announced that two of its top executives are going to retire. One of those was sort of expected. The other kind of comes as a surprise. Lewis Booth, the head of finance at Ford, and Derek Cusack, the head of product development, will be leaving Ford at the end of March. Lewis Booth, 63 years old, is close enough to the traditional retirement age of 65 that it was sort of expected. But hearing that Derek Cusack, 60 years old, will retire comes as a surprise. Here's my Autoline insight. Ford has deep bent strength and will easily replace them. But clearly, the company felt the need to inject new blood into its management ranks. That tells me Ford recognizes the easy part of its turnaround is over, and it's throwing in fresh troops for the next phase of the battle. The company also named John Huntsman to its board of directors. Huntsman was running for president of the United States on the Republican ticket, but his campaign went nowhere. He's also the former ambassador to China, and undoubtedly Ford is looking for some expertise on how to weave its way through the Byzantine maze of Chinese politics. Ford, as you know, has a lot of catching up to do in China. Speaking of China, last week we showed you ripoffs of the Ford F-150 and Chevy Colorado from Chinese automaker JAC. And now a Chinese company, a brewing company, is ripping off the Jeep name for its sons. Its official name is the Hubei Jeep Brewery Corporation, and one of its labels features a picture of a Jeep. The company even offered a Jeep Compass to the distributor who could sell the most Jeep beer as an award. <laughs> I guess I sure would like to know if it's any good. 
Coming up next, Volvo's new president in North America talked about how they're going to be taking the brand more upscale and why they're doing it. Reducing exhaust emissions, aerified diesel particulate filters, high filtration, low back pressure, small package size, excellent durability. DowAerify.com. On Autoline this week, we've got a smorgasbord of interviews, including Klaus Bussi, the head of interior design at Chrysler, talking about the 700C concept vehicle that was shown in Detroit. We have Max Wolf, the head of design at Lincoln, talking about the new MKZ. We have Fred Diaz, the CEO of the Ram brand, as well as Ludwig Villisch, the new president of BMW North America. But we also have John Maloney, the new president of Volvo Cars North America. And in the following clip, he talks about how and why they want to take the Volvo brand more upscale. Uh, Volvo's now owned by the Chinese company sure. Geely, and I'm just wondering how how is that all meshing together? Yeah, so we're uh, you know that all took place August 1st, 2010, when we separated from Ford. Uh, I will tell you that that Volvo is thriving, and yes, the U.S. had a great year. Globally, we were up 20% action on a global basis. Uh, it was the fastest growing luxury brand, and, and what it's really allowed is is Volvo to be Volvo. You know, they've given us the investment, the stability. Uh, we have new leadership in, in our corporate office, Stefan Jacoby, uh, and Volvo is, is thriving as being Volvo and being you know, an independent company, more or less. Uh, so I would say 16 months into it, things are going quite well. We're doing very, very well around the world. Of course, uh, the chairman of Geely would love to see Volvo go more upscale. Yep. How, how do you see that working out in North America? Yeah, uh, we're full supporter of that. I mean, we've, we've, we, as a global level, have said by 2020, there's, there's a couple things we want to do. You know, we want our global volumes to be about 800,000. We just did under 450,000 this year globally. So, you know, still it's a, it's a big step to 800,000. We want a top tier luxury perception, uh, which means you want to play at the top. Doesn't mean in terms of pure volume, but certainly in terms of image, you know, by 2020. Uh, and that's very clear across the company. Uh, I believe from a U.S. standpoint that's important. Uh, to play in sort of a, a middle ground is, is a very difficult place to play. Others recently in the luxury category have said, you know, that's where they're going to play. We're very clear, you know, over time, it's not something that'll happen just in 2012, 2013, that, that we're going to go do that. And, and I would even say uh, some of our car lines today are there, S60, XC60, fully competitive, you know, get great cross shopping with all those brands, all those German brands that I won't name here, um, you know, but you, but you know who I'm talking about. It's sure a great right. consideration. By the way, you can watch that entire show right now at www.autoline.tv or check out your local public television listings because Autoline can now be seen on many public TV stations across the United States and Canada. And be sure to tune in tonight for another episode of Roundabout starting at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And that wraps up this week's worth of automotive reports. Thanks for your interest in the automotive industry. We will see you on Monday. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.